Alright guys, so everybody asked for a video about with the car running. Um, so, here you go. Uh, this of course is after I kind of dialed everything in, sort of. I mean, you can see it's, it's trying to level out. It's just got a few moments, but... Um, what you're looking at when you first set up this tune, the biggest thing you want to do is make sure you set it up for a... <clears throat> set it up for a, the proper dash. Which the good thing is, is since it's a stinger, it's kind of set up for 5.0 and there's certain things that you need to be able to see, certain things that really don't matter to us because we don't have anything like that. So when you're doing that, you definitely want to come in, right click, go to load save, and essentially go in there and load the dashboard that stinger provides on their, um, on their flash drive. And when you load it, if you just load the plain Jane one, you load it and this is what you get. Um, now the biggest thing to pay attention to is your throttle position sensor, which is right here. You've got, in this case, you know, I'm at 0.1%, which is very, very small. Um, you, I can try to recalibrate recal it, but it usually doesn't do anything. Um, if you want to recalibrate, you need to go up to Tools at the top. You see it says Calibrate TPS. Drop down. You say Get Current. In my case, I don't think it's going to change. Except, nothing's going to change. And then before you even start the car, you're going to want to <clears throat> log what the wide open throttle is so basically just key on have it connected put your foot to the floor log what that is and that's going to be your wide open throttle um, and then for you guys asking about how to get it basically set up the part that's going to matter the most before you can get the thing running is go to engine and sequential settings you're going to want to come in here you're going to have different values and some of this stuff uh, if you're on a pimp xs you're looking at a fully sequential system these values down here, while well, obviously they're not going to match whatever you have, I guarantee it. Um, you want to go and require your fuel. Um, you can see engine displacement, cylinders, injector flow, and the air fuel ratio. Um, that's what your target is. So then that kind of scales everything throughout the entire program based on what you want. Um, of course, I already have mine set. In my case, when I got the program, it was at like a 331 with 36 pound ejector. Nothing even relevant to anything I'm running because I'm running EV6 19 pound Bosch injector from a 5 Oaks floor that have been rebuilt. And then I'm running a 302 with flat tops, work over 69 Windsor heads, F cam, full exhaust, uh, explorer intake that's been worked over, and then just full bolt ons. So nothing too major, um, pretty vanilla in terms of what it takes to run a box body with an S cam intake. Um, so essentially, moving on. This is your main dashboard, this is what you always see. You pay attention to all sorts of the good stuff. Some of it we know about, some of it we don't. Um, depends on what your, um, what your experience with this stuff is. I have a background with tuning LSs in here's video, so I'm gonna pop this open, it wasn't anything major. But, um, one thing I did notice though is you wanna really pay attention to something. When you first start it up, once you get it going, you do have a couple things you need to pay attention to. One of which is the start of an idle. Um, you know, the car's always going to be close to the most part, but you'll have what they call WUE, warm up enrichment. That is when you first start the car up and it's cold. They say the best thing to do is to have the car run it, get it warm, then swap it in, but by the time you freaking do everything I showed you in the previous video, it's going to be cold again, so it's not going to matter. Um, they usually set the warm up enrichment, at least in my file, 140 from there. The closed loop idle takes over and then you're on the base tune. When you're in warm up enrichment, don't make any adjustments because everything's going to be all skewed and all because it's going to use percentages to try and help the car run and all this stuff. So, um, definitely suggest that you kind of ignore that part. Um, but once you get above 140, which is going to be down here on your left, you see cool intent. You get above 140 um, and you have your throttle position sensor set, you have your air fuel ratio gauge set up. Which that again is in tools up top. So calibrate air FR table, you go in here, you can actually pick what you're doing, what you're using. You can also use it to adjust and calibrate it specifically to any sort of discrepancy between the wide band and what you're doing. Um, and in my case, I'm only running one sensor. Currently it's in the driver's side. Um, to be smart, I'm gonna put it in the passenger side to see if it's leaner. But essentially, once you get it going and it gets above 140, you're gonna to wanna to go and look at the fuel table. And you're gonna 
want to look at your air fuel ratio at the same time. Do not use live tune where it automatically tunes what's going on, which is right here. It's great and all, but when you're first trying to get the car running, this entire table is going to be completely wrong. It's just, it's not going to be close to what you run. Every car is different. Every, every situation is different. Everybody lives in different places. I live on the coast of South Carolina where we're pretty much under, under seawater right now. Um, I'm in a negative altitude. So everything changes, especially when you're considering you're running map and you're running a barrow sensor. Everything changes. Um, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the fuel BE table. It looks very similar to your tune table, but the difference is, is this is specifically for you to kind of look at and adjust. So you can see all the different values that you have in here and how it scales upwards. Um, there are multiple things you can do at the top right. You can equal it, you can subtract, add, you can, um, you can just, the up and down arrows are just point values that so you just hit up, it goes up one point, goes down, it goes one down one point, and by point, I mean point one, not one full point, one, not one point zero. Then you have the graphing functions, which I had no idea were in here, and I don't believe they were in here when I used Tuner Studio. Um, the interpolate keys, and then my favorite is the smooth cells that kind of helped me get it started. So when I got the car started, I got it running. <laughs> then I essentially looked and saw where my air fuel ratio was, which I was extremely rich because I thought I had 36 pound injectors. Got all that corrected, and then came back in here and said, okay, why is it going? And it'll show you when it, when it oscillates, it'll put a little round circle as it, where it oscillates in between what cells. Because what it does is as it moves in and, in and over these different cells, it's actually currently using this cell and this cell, probably this cell and this cell in a average. So it's not exactly using 33.4 fueling. You can see, it's, see the percentages. So it's essentially telling you what it's using based on what it has around it. So in any of these cases, you can see that's a pretty substantial jump to something I'm working on. But it has to, you want it to sit right in one cell for the most part. You don't want it to jump around a lot. Of course, that's a surging idle, which God knows if you're a 5.0 guy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So when it goes from here, you're gonna wanna go and <clears throat> basically select any number of cells. I did a three by like six square, which was all right here. And then I started downing it by three to five points as I needed to move from a full point of AFR down. So in my case, I was running, um, you know, I was running in like the 11 and a half to 12, 12 point, uh, 12 to one air fuel ratio. From there, you're gonna wanna subtract probably at least 10 or 15 points from this table in that, that square I said that will ultimately bring you down or bring you up in the AFR table but bring you down in the value on the table itself so in this case let's say we were running at 11 to 1 right now we want the car to run at say 14 to 1 that's what's in the AFR table on the AFR table in the same screen when you go to fuel settings drop down to AFR table 1 that's where you're at you want to drop down you see if you have it set up for 14 to 1 at around this KPA this barrow setting as well as this idle setting then you want the and you want the car to ride at about 14 months so you want to do the best adjustment you can before you even consider even using any sort of tune tuner studio tune live for you so that way you can actually get it right so in this case again I went in here highlighted a large amount of cells um, I did I do the subtract function if I'm doing a large quantity because it subtracts it and it maintains the grading that's built into the table that you get from Stinger you can choose not to do that and just set it to all one value. Um, some people like to set, you know, these three, four, five, six, you know, three by three squares is all the same value because they feel like the car levels out and it does to a point. Um, and I will ultimately end up doing that as I get closer to having the final tune done. But I still have timing and things like that that I want to adjust. So, um, in the ultimate grand scheme of things though, you just wanted to get it to hold a pretty steady constant value make sure it doesn't have to surge and then you'll probably notice in my case I mean I had a hundred in these values right here when I first started I ended up using the grading function so once I had set you know roughly over to here or so over and about halfway up these were so far off to the right that I knew that it was just I was kind of 
kind of screwed up. I'm gonna have to just take a take a best guess. The cool thing is, is if you highlight up to what you've adjusted, then you highlight a correct section that makes sense. Then you can use the grading function. The grading function will grade over and down as you need to. Um, and in some of these cases, this car isn't boosted, so I'm not looking at something that's gonna put a huge fuel load on the car. And the barometer, the, the barometer is not gonna go off the table. So, uh, you know. It's hard for me to dial in anything up here because I, I don't have a way to do to do that. The car won't ever see that kind of load. But in the event that it does, you have to be aware that you want it to run very rich, which is why the values are very high. Because the last thing you want to do is blow it up. I'd rather the car shut off from being so rich than to have it lean out to the point of melt piston. That's a lot more work. So regardless, that's kind of just a generic idea of how you need to go about getting started getting it running. Um, once you get it running and you get it dialed in for the most part with a decent idle, um, you know, I've noticed my car kind of idles a little high. Um, and, you know, I've, I adjusted in the idle tune, uh, adjusted the car down to ride in that 900 to 950 range. Um, so it's not too far off. And then even the fueling is pretty close. Um, I ended up having to take a, um, take a degree of timing out of it at idle too to try and get it to calm down a little bit because it just seemed like it was a little bit like way too ready to go. Um, and ultimately it did help a lot. So, you know, it's idling about where I want it to. I mean, I wish it had more camp chop, but this exhaust that's on this car and the fact that it has one seven roll rockers and it screwed up the duration of it, it's all hand me down stuff. So I didn't expect it to be a race car. When it's got good stuff in it, then I'll be more concerned. But, you know, for the most part, you can see everything's kind of holding steady. And, you know, it's, it's getting there. So don't get frustrated. If you get to a point where you're really, really upset or really confused, feel free to leave a comment or, you know, message me on wherever I posted this if you saw it. Um, and just kind of go from there. Don't, but don't try and be a hero. Don't try and make a bunch of changes. Do one thing at a time. Save it. Use the, the return function that they built into this. Because it is known for being very friendly. So like, see all the return points I have, you can see all the dates that are on there. There's plenty of them. There's not, you know, I didn't, I didn't make one big file change and then just move on. I, I made a bunch of changes over time and paced myself to make sure I didn't screw myself. So, you know, but as you can see, the car's sitting here running right along. So overall, 